Okay, uh, so we've got the onions out here. Now, um, cucumbers are going to grow along the fence here. I'm going to have a trellis there for them. The cabbage is over here, so uh, the onions are going to go along the front of this bed. I, I like to get as much in an area as I can. So we're going to move the, the um, mulch back. Now I've got a lot of tomato and um, dill and um, cilantro seedlings coming up here. Some of which I'm going to let, the, some of the dill and the cilantro I'm going to let go. Uh, and it'll, it will grow then in between my other plants. But I'm going to keep it thin to a point. And then uh, the tomatoes, obviously, I'm going to go ahead and pull those. But um, when I push the mulch back, I'm also going to look real close, disturb the, so the surface of the soil a little bit, and I'm going to look for cutworms. Here's a cutworm here. So, got a cutworm right here. Uh, he's all smooth and, uh, you know, he's short about an inch long and all that. So I got a cutworm, just going to squish him. Fly my hands off on the grass. If you don't get the cutworms, they're going to eat the onion right off, right at the right at the soil line, and that gets real frustrating. I lost a couple of cabbages to that. So we look we look good right here. I'm not seeing any more. We just had the one. I'm seeing a lot of regular worms, but I'm not seeing any cutworms. Okay, so now I'm just going to loosen the soil a little bit with my, uh, well, I don't remember what the hell they call this thing. It's a little bitty shovel. Here's another cutworm. Just found one while I was digging. So you want to keep watching for those when you're loosening the soil. I'm going to plant these onions about three inches apart. are thin and uh, don't take up a lot of garden space. See there's a cilantro seedling. I just pulled it. Uh, here it is. That's a cilantro seedling there. I have several growing over here amongst the cabbages and there's several growing in this bed here and I'm going to let those come up along with the uh, dill. There's a lot of dill over there because we use a lot of dill and cilantro and I just let those kind of come up on their own and then I thin them where I don't want them. Okay, I'm going to start here in a corner, get along right along the edge of the box, and then lift up as gently as I can to loosen that soil, and I'm going to get my finger under there. Okay, now, these, these onions are going to have, the roots are going to have grown together if you saw my replanting biannuals video where I planted pulled up the full-grown onions to, to plant to uh, gather seed from. You saw how intertwined the roots were. Same thing here. These roots are going to be intertwined, but as long as you have a good root stand like that, you're going to be okay. So then you just make a little depression in the soil, and there you go. That onion's planted. It takes a long time simply because of the number of onions there are. These are white onions, yellow onions, whatever you want to call them. I've got yellow and purple in here. These are these are yellow. So I'm going to stagger them. I'll plant one back here, then one up here, then one back here, then one up here like that. So I get a couple more in, and then we'll uh, pause the video. Okay, and so on, right on down the line. After uh, you get some of these onions in, you want to you're going to want to come back and uh, mulch around them again. I wanted to bring that up. Uh, and also, I mentioned I've got red and, and yellow onions in here. It, it doesn't matter if you get them mixed up. When uh, the onions, as the onions are maturing you'll be able to see whether or not they're red or yellow. And
then uh, if you got the red mixed in with the yellow, you know, and they're all growing next to each other, that, that's not going to cause you any problems at all. Um, they're not going to cross pollinate or anything like that. Well, that's that's an issue you got to worry about if you're um, growing uh, plants that you're going to gather seed from is cross pollination. I'll talk about that in another video, but um, the onion, you're not going to have a problem with the onions doing this because I'm not gathering seed from these onions. I'm just growing these onions for, um, these will be for, for we'll be eating these uh, through the season and then we'll also be storing them. Uh, you know, the ones we don't eat we will store for winter and then uh, some of those that we store for winter I'll then replant in the uh, next, you know, next year to, like I did in my, my biannual video, I'll be planting those next year to gather seed from. And, uh, but, but the onions aren't going to cross pollinate, you're not going to have a problem with that. So you, 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 don't, you don't need to worry about which ones are red and which are green, or yellow, it doesn't matter. So I just wanted to bring that up. I'm going to go ahead and finish mulching this and then we'll continue on down the row here. As I'm mulching here, people, I want to bring something up. <clears throat> this, this mulching in between these, these uh, onions is really a pain because you have to be careful. You don't want to damage the onion. <clears throat> and it's hard to kind of work it in there amongst them. I, you know, I've just, I've just finished this little bit right here and uh, coming in and pulling up on the greens and kind of resituating it. And this is a pain. I have, a, I, have a, I have a stronger word for it than that, but I'm not going to use it. Um, but come summer, this is huge because it's going to help keep your soil cool. You're going to have to water a lot less. It's better for your earthworm and your fungal growth in the soil. And um, it's, it's going to save you so much time and effort later on in the season, especially when it's hot out, and you're not going to be, you know, want to be out as much working on your knees like this, um, and it's so much better for your soil. You never want to leave your garden soil bare, any bare spots at all. So it's a little time consuming and kind of a hassle, and you got to be careful so you don't damage the plants. I did, I did actually damage one right here. I got a, a onion that I, I bent the, the green. I've got one here too. Um, these things are going to happen. It's not going to cause any catastrophic damage, so it, that's minor. I, I'll just take a pair of scissors and cut that off, and it's going to be just fine. And, and of all these I just planted, I only damaged the two, and it's, it's minor damage. So I uh, did want to bring that up. Okay, uh, I want to show you something here. That white thing right there, that's the egg of a wolf spider. You see that spider right there? That's called a wolf spider. Now, that wolf spider is carry, carrying her egg around and she's gonna protect it. Um, you know, and wolf spiders get huge and they live in the, in the soil, that's why she's there. I was digging this up and I, I, I disturbed her nest and now she's got her egg and she's protecting it. Um, she's gonna move on now. She's, she won't drop that egg. I'm gonna get her out of the way. Come here, sweetie. I don't want you in there because I'm going to be using that. See how she's holding on to that egg? They're fantastic spiders. Okay, I'm going to move her over here. There we go. Nice and gentle. There you go. We'll find you make a new house. Um, you do not want to destroy those spiders. I, I know a lot of you are probably going to be nervous about spiders. I, I know a lot of people that are, but the, the wolf spiders make their nest down here in your, in your garden, and they don't make webs, they dig holes, and then they live in the holes, and they come out at night, and they look for things like cutworms and other insects that are going to, the, the, the spiders aren't going to bother you, and they're not going to bother your plants. What they're going to do is they're going to kill the, the bugs that are going to bother your plants. So, I know some of you are squeamish about that kind of stuff, and I, you know, I don't want to say suck it up and get over it. Uh, you know, that's not appropriate. 
because some of you have a true fear of spiders, but these are things you need to get used to, and you need to realize that the spider is your friend, not your enemy. Uh, he doesn't want to play with you, he doesn't want to fight with you, he doesn't want to do anything with you but get away from you. And, you know, that wolf spider right there was, def you know, she had her, her nest, her egg cluster, and she was going to defend that. And at some point, if I messed with it long enough, she might come at me and, you know, try and bite me or something. Even if she did, it's it's not going to cause me a problem. It's not a it's not a black widow or a brown recluse. Here's another cutworm. It's it's a it's a wolf spider. It, if you got bit one by one out here, you probably wouldn't even know it. So unless you saw it happen. So just I wanted to bring that up because because she was right there with her egg cluster, and I have those things all throughout my garden. Some of them are pretty good size, um, and, but I like having them here, and I wanted to bring that up. You know. Just because it's an insect doesn't mean it's bad. Don't kill it. Um, spiders are great to have in the garden because uh, they, they, like I said, they kill the things that kill your plants.